Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. Uh, and if you are new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, but essentially what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the entire Bengals class looking at their production and athleticism traits on paper to see how they compare to past successful players from other draft classes, uh, you know, to kind of see what the chances are for the players drafted in this class to become successful. Um, so with all that stuff out of the way, uh, let's get to this draft class. So first off, we have Billy Price, Offensive Center at Ohio State. Unfortunately for Billy Price, he didn't really do any athleticism testing uh, because he had the torn pectoral at the combine. Um, because of that, there's just not a lot of stuff to work with when it comes to him. Um, so I'm just going to kind of leave him blank. Uh, but uh, just know he, he did hit at least all the size sort of measurables you're looking for in terms of a all pro such probable potential center or offensive lineman uh, in general, you know, interior offensive lineman. But um, because he didn't really do the bench press healthy, he didn't do the short shuttle, three cone, 40, vertical broad jump. There's really not a lot to use here to project in terms of his analytics. So because of that, I'm just going to leave him blank. But we do have other players where there was plenty of information. For example, Jesse Bates, defensive safety out of Wake Forest. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 94.95 solo tackle score, 97.72 interception score, and a 38.20 pass deflection score. Uh, it doesn't quite hit the bottom end threshold in terms of Pro Bowl potential in terms of pass deflection data, but does have very, very good solo tackle interception data. Um, and when you look at the averages of the position, this kind of further shows some of the issues in terms of pass deflection market share um, or just pass deflection data in general is that um, again very good solo tackle data very good um, interception data but just pass deflection data is just not matching what most all pro players perform pro bowl players and starter players but when you look at his athleticism traits there are some positives here um, 36.61 in terms of explosiveness, 65.56 in terms of speed, and 72.79 in terms of flexibility for his size. This is another area where he doesn't quite hit all pro potential or pro bowl potential because of his flexibility testing, but he does hit at least the thresholds he needs to hit in terms of long-term starter potential. So I think in many ways when you're looking at Jesse Bates, you're looking at a guy that has pretty good solo tackle data and very, very good interception data, and, and athleticism-wise is good but not great, but Essentially, this is a guy that has the potential to become a long-term starting safety, but high-quality outcomes are just not as likely because of some of his deficiencies in terms of his production data and his athleticism data. Then, of course, we get to Sam Hubbard, um, edge rusher at Ohio State. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 34.61 solo tackle score, 88.02 um, sack score, and 32.15 uh, tackle for loss score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all pro threshold or pro bowl threshold when it comes to his uh, overall production data traits uh, and athleticism wise uh, he has some very good athleticism traits along with the very very poor one uh, 78.87 in terms of explosiveness 25.05 in terms of speed and 90.11 in terms of flexibility i mean in, way, in many ways he has a, the the he has all pro explosiveness and flexibility traits without all pro speed or pro bowl speed for his size uh, and the biggest issue with him is just his production data again. Um, so I think when it comes to Sam Hubbard, you're looking at a guy that has the potential to become a rotational um, player uh, to potential starter, fringe starter. But his production data is so low that it's very unlikely that he becomes a high quality player. Um, and again, very, very likely that he ends up just becoming more of a backup rotational guy uh, in, his, in his future. Uh, then, of course, you get to Malik Jefferson, linebacker out of Texas. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 97.39 solo tackle score, which pretty much hits at least the all-pro threshold and pro bowl threshold when it comes to his production. And on top of that, um, hits above the all-pro average score of 96.95. So very, very good production traits from Malik Jefferson. And when you look at his athleticism traits, he had a 79.37 explosive lower body strength score, 92.46 speed score, and 83.22 flexibility score. Pretty much hits... All the thresholds in terms of Pro Bowl potential and looks like a Pro Bowl linebacker in general. So I think when it comes to Malik Jefferson, he's a guy that has a very good chance to become a long-term starter to Pro Bowl player based on his production and based on his athleticism traits. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Mark Walton, uh, running back out of Florida. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 56.57 market share production score. 
which doesn't hit the All Pro threshold or Pro Bowl five-time Pro Bowl threshold, but does hit at least the three-time Pro Bowl threshold when you look at his overall data. But when you look at the averages at the position, really below average what the All Pro score is, really below average what the Pro Bowl score is, and also below average what the starter score is. You don't necessarily need Mark Walton to be the starting running back for them um, because of uh, the players you you know took in the past. Um, but it is a little bit concerning that his production data is this low. And on top of that, when you get to his athleticism traits, 18.43 in terms of explosiveness, 25.92 in terms of speed, and 28.75 in terms of flexibility, woefully below average, pretty much zero chance of becoming an all-pro slash pro bowl running back based on his athleticism traits. You add that with his production data, and this is just not that rosy of a pick, uh, especially for how high he was drafted. Then, of course, you get to Devontae Harris, cornerback out of Illinois State. Uh, when you look at his production data at his level of competition, uh, he had a 94.04 solo tackle score and a 76.71 pass deflection score. Very good solo tackle data, very good pass deflection data, but keep in mind that this is not at the FBS level. This was at the FCS level. Uh, but does have good athleticism traits, 72.19 in terms of explosiveness, 94.27 in terms of speed, and 72.46 in terms of flexibility. Um, essentially has Pro Bowl level athleticism traits at the cornerback position with very good production coming out of his college at a lower level division. I think there's a very good chance that Devontae Harris becomes a long-term starter and Pro Bowl player based on his overall profile. And uh, I think this is a pretty solid pick. And of course, you get to Andrew Brown, interior defensive lineman out of Virginia. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 68.58 um, solo tackle score, 94.26 sack score, 96.21 um, tackle for loss score. Uh, pretty much, he doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold when it comes to 3-4 defensive ends, uh, but does hit at least the starter thresholds at the position. When you look at the averages, the only major lagging part of his data point is his solo tackle data. Um, you know, when you look at the starter average, the Pro Bowl average, and All-Pro average, that's the, the solo tackle day is the only sort of thing that kind of holds him back. And when you get to his athleticism traits, he doesn't really have All-Pro or Pro Bowl uh, uh, athleticism traits uh, for the most part. Um, uh, 25.21 in terms of explosiveness, 60.06 .06 in terms of speed, and 75.84 in terms of flexibility for his size. Um, so again, when you look at his athleticism traits, uh, he doesn't quite have all-pro explosiveness and doesn't have Pro Bowl explosiveness. But he does have a good shot to become a long-term starter. And that's the best thing I can say about Andrew Brown is that this is a guy that doesn't really have the traits on paper to become an all-pro such Pro Bowl edge or interior defense alignment, but definitely has a good shot to become a long-term starter when you look at all of his data collectively. And, of course, you get Darius Phillips, a quarterback out of Western Kentucky. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 36.71 solo tackle score, 88.31 pass deflection score. Um, very, very good pass deflection data, mm, kind of poor solo tackle data. There are a couple cornerbacks who have been successful with this type of profile, but not that many, only about a handful of guys. And I've done videos in the past. If you look at my Denzel Ward analytics video or my uh, Alexander cornerback video, I kind of went into some of the issues with this type of profile. But you do need to have good athleticism traits if you're going to test this poorly in terms of solo tackle data. And unfortunately for Darius Phillips, he doesn't. 42.28 um, in terms of explosiveness, 51.90 in terms of speed. Does not really have all pro potential or pro bowl potential based on his athleticism traits. More so has starter potential. Um, so again, he has pretty decent pass deflection data with okay athleticism. There's a chance that Darius Phillips could become like a fringe long-term starter here. Um, but definitely a lot of question marks in terms of his athleticism data and in terms of his solo tackle data. And of course, we get to Logan Woodside, quarterback out of Toledo. Uh, when you look at his career FBS data, he had a 65.45 score, which pretty much hits above the Pro Bowl career threshold. Uh, when you look at the average career FBS score, uh, which is about 72.26 for Pro Bowlers and 70.76 in terms of starters, he's a little bit below that. Uh, and when you look at his... Best FBS career score, which is 82.09 for Logan Woodside. It pretty much hits above the, the Pro Bowl quarterback threshold and long-term starter threshold in terms of the position. I think when you look at Logan Woodside, you're looking at a guy that has the potential to become a long-term starter to fringe Pro Bowl player. Um, in many ways, and I hate to say this to Bengal fans, but Logan Woodside's profile looks very similar to Andy Dalton in many ways. Very similar career data, very similar FBS data. So uh, just take that as you... As you, as you want. Um, but Logan Woodside does have potential to become a long-term starter. 
um, because of his uh, his career data and in terms of his best single season data. But he is someone who does look very similar to Andy Dalton in many respects. Then, of course, you get to Rod Taylor, offensive guard out of Ole Miss. Um, you get to his athleticism trait, he had 87.90 explosive lower body strength score, 70.87 speed score, and 62 flexibility score. In many ways, has Pro Bowl athleticism traits at the position. And when you look at the averages at the position, looks closer to a starter because of his flexibility testing, but still pretty dang good profile. Very explosive, very fast, and does not have below average flexibility testing. So I think Rod Taylor is a very good shot to become a long-term starting interior offensive lineman based on his overall athleticism traits. Then, of course, we get to Auden Tate, wide receiver out of Florida State. Um, you look at his production data, he had a 43.40 passing yards market share production score, which does not hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter bottom and threshold since 1969. And we look at the averages, averages at the position, woefully below the All-Pro average, Pro Bowl average, and starter average in terms of his production data. So that's a big concern. And what's even more concerning is his athleticism traits. 43.70 in terms of explosiveness, 38.08 in terms of speed, and 13.13 in terms of flexibility. Does not have one 54 or higher athleticism trait when it comes to the position. And to be completely honest with you guys, all the wide receivers that became multiple All-Pro and Pro Bowl wide receivers who had very, very low athleticism traits, guys like Jarvis Landry, um, guys uh, like uh, Chad Johnson, all those guys had much higher production data coming out. Um, so unfortunately for Auden Tate, very unlikely he becomes an all-pro player. Very unlikely he becomes a starting player. And even more likely that he becomes a long-term starter based on his athleticism traits and based on his production data. So overall, when you look at the Cincinnati Bengals draft class, I think you have a bit of a mixed bag here. Uh, I, I think there are some players that have a chance to become long-term starters. Uh, you have some players that have some high-quality upside. Uh, you have some players that have virtually no shot of becoming much of anything at the next level. But uh, it's not a terrible class. Um, there are definitely a lot of players. There's a lot of players, first of all. I mean, there's, there's, there's just a ton of players. Um, so there are definitely many of them that are going to work out, um, at least long term. Um, but there definitely was some question marks in terms of certain players being drafted as high as they were drafted. Um, so we'll ultimately see what happens with this draft class. But overall, this was the general analytics review of the Bengals draft class. Of course, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.